And thank you, and welcome back to Cigar Time. Thank you for what? Well, I don't know. I'm giving thanks that we're still all here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's because good. Unfortunately, one of us isn't here anymore. That's true. But that's more true. about that later. Your friendly Tuesday night show all about premium cigars. Again, we're joined by Michael Giannetti. Giannetti. Really? Oh, oh, my I blew that. God. I know you 20 okay. years and I blew it. All right. Hey, that's some You're blooper reel. That's blooper reel. Well, yeah, let it roll. I, I did that deliberately just to get a little... The well-dressed stylish yeah. Michael G. Today we're going to have the lovely Miss T. Oh, no, no. we're not going to have the lovely Miss T. I don't know what's going on with him. No, we're going to have himself. Michael describe our cigar for today, which is the Amazon Basin by yeah. CAO. Uh, and it comes in various sizes. No. All of them are just this size. <laughs> you can have it in any size you want as long as it's this. As long as it's tour. Did he just drop in from with planet? Mars yeah, from, uh, <laughs> from uh, Yatanga. Tanga. Michael, uh, since uh, uh, the lovely Miss T, <laughs> what happened now? She's talking about Nothing. Uranus. She is talking. Uranus. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't have, I don't have hemorrhoids. Why don't, uh, why, don't, why don't you tell us about this blend? So, <laughs> as you can tell, we're not having a lot of fun here. But yeah. that's yeah. what cigars are about. Yes. So, right? <laughs> right. right? So, first of all, thank you. I'm back in my hometown, Philadelphia, and yeah. excited Woo-hoo. to be with very old friends. Yeah, very old oh, friends. Yeah. But that's what happens when you, when you know each other for a long time. Yeah. So, this is was released last year. This is called Amazon Basin, and it's a very unique story. I had a little bit to do with it, but the man that really had a lot to do with it is Ricky Rodriguez. He's the man behind the CIO blend, and he's not here, so I'm going to speak on his behalf. And also Ed McKenna, the other gentleman that worked on this. What these guys did is we actually commissioned, um, we were, CAO basically looks for tobaccos around the world, and so we were looking for something very, very unique. Yeah. Part of the tobacco was in the Amazon base, it's called Braganza Tobacco, and literally you have to take a boat, which is like not recommended to go to the Amazon, and you go into this field and you'll find this very, very unique tobacco that is actually blended within here. That's about all I'm going to tell you about this blend, but what, you, what I suggest you do before you smoke this cigar is literally put it up to your nose and inhale a little bit, and you will smell this almost sweet, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, date-like flavor. Right, Rob? It is. It's incredible. It really is. I love, I'll, I'll talk about the cigar No, go ahead. Later. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'll talk about my opinion about the cigar later. Okay. And so what you do, what you get with this is because it was so limited, every three years is how long it takes to grow this tobacco. And so hopefully in 2017 there will be more of this available and you'll see more Amazon Basin tobacco cigars made with this specific blend. The really unique thing is instead of putting a cigar band on it, we actually took some of the stems from the tobacco and actually made it as the band, which really tied together this whole Amazon Basin thing. That's crazy because most companies put the stem in the cigar. <laughs> Yeah, which is not recommended. Well, hopefully no, not. not. That, yeah. It doesn't really, a lot really of doesn't that, smoke. But I know a lot of guys have tried Going to smoke through too. this, and it actually imparts even an even more unique thing. I have personally have not, haven't really smoked through the stem part of it, but when you light this up, you know, you're going to get this very, very unique taste profile that's kind of very, very different than anything you've ever tried in cigars. And uh, really proud of the guys, Ricky Rodriguez, Ed McKenna, that worked on this blend, and uh, you guys need to try it. I understand, though, Arthur and the... And, uh, team here at Cigar Cigars, you guys may have a few of these. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hands on the call. By all that we can get. We yep. may have some. So, Because this is a very limited model, and every once in a while, every once in a while, we dial up our old friends, and, you know, a truck pulls up in the middle of the night, and, yeah. the, and the back door off. opens up, and armed guards are there, and we, you know, pull for a few boxes here and there. Well, I mean, you pay and for that's it. how we do it. That's how we something like it. Yeah, you gotta do something. Who's so, that's all you're gonna leave us with with this my, blend? My understanding is not only is this tobacco very unique, but the method that they use for fermenting the tobacco is also extremely unusual. Is that the one where they put the tobacco in with the piranhas? No. <laughs> Although, no, no, it has no bite at well, all. That's the account <laughs> of the company. That's very good. No bite. I don't know. I know there's some <laughs> you know, like, no laughter from our live studio audience on that joke. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it, as, as I understand it, instead of piling up the tobacco in the pilonas, they take each leaf and they roll the leaf up into like almost like a straw, very thin little piece, uh, strips, and they stack thousands of those into barrels and then they ferment it 
under steam pressure for six months. And the fermentation happens in chemically in a slightly different way because of that. They and ferment it, them for six months? Yes. Oh, under, is that true or is he making stuff up again? No, that's... Is, it, is this story old water? <laughs> uh, a little bit, but... <laughs> A little bit. It's what it says on the box. Not enough for a good thing. It, right? it says it on the box. <laughs> what box? <laughs> and you believe that? I, so again, how can you believe it? You put it actually, on the internet. Actually, actually you're right. You're, you're partially right. Part of the way they do this, actually, they roll the tobacco in in almost palm bark. And what it comes out, what you do is the way we receive it from Brazil is actually looks like a shillelagh. It looks like mm. a big stick that you actually have to, have to unravel. And so that's how you get the tobacco out. And then you have to rub it out almost like pipe tobacco to use it for, for the blend. It's a, a very unique process. It took us, it took Ricky and Ed a long time and the team in, in uh, Nicaragua and Honduras where they made these blends to come up with it. The unique thing about this tobacco is you have to use it in a way with the other tobaccos that we're using in this blend to actually have to be able to burn and smoke really, really well. So you get this flavor. And I mean, right off when I lit this, I mean, it's just, wow, it just hits you with something. It is unique. Right? Yes. Right. It's clearly unique. It's really impressive. Rob, I would love to hear what you were about to say about what, you know, why it was this. No, no. Whose idea was it to grow tobacco in the Amazon basin? Um, it is something that the local indigenous people do. We have tobacco guys that scour the earth for different tobaccos, and part of what I do, and Ricky is on this team as well. We have an innovation team that we're always looking for very, very different things because that's what we like to do. We like to play with tobacco, and we sent a guy, one of our master uh, tobacco guys, Johnny Diaz, who actually runs our Caribbean operation, and Ernest Gojack, who's our tobacco buyer, and we say, hey, man, we're looking for really, really cool tobaccos. And, you know, Ernest ran into this and Johnny's, and they're like, hey, man, you know, do you guys want to take a trip? And when we found out about what it was involved in taking this trip, it's like, you know, I want to come back alive because, yeah. again, yeah. you literally have to take a canoe ride and you have to go walk it through the rainforest. It's a, it's a really intense thing. We actually have photographs and videos of this, and it's... It's pretty impressive just to get this tobacco, and that's part of the reason why we don't have a lot of it. Like, how, it long, how long have they been doing growing tobacco there? Forever. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah it's really Never a local. Heard of it. Yeah, nobody had heard of it. We, they smoked we, it down there. Yeah. Yeah. Is it People grown differently? Is it just like a, a big field like you would normally it's like think a big of? Or? Field. Yeah, exactly. I, just, I, I guess I was just picturing it's, like stuff in the middle of a rainforest and swamps. Yeah, yeah. literally, that's what you do. You yeah. literally, they, these guys literally machete through the rainforest and they find this clearing and that's where they grow it. Don't so you remember actually, your old swamp tobacco? Area, it sounds like that. Very much. The, the tobacco plants literally from ground to ceiling are probably about this big. I mean, they're, they don't really grow like regular tobacco plants where you get like six, seven yeah. feet tall. Mm -hmm. You got a lot, get a lot of leaves off it. That's why it's rare. It's very, it's very rare. And it's hard to get because it doesn't get that big. So exactly. there's not enough tobacco. Exactly. So exactly. this is yet another reason for us to not let the big lumber companies clear cut the rainforest. Oh, farms. God, no. That's a whole other. Yeah, that's yeah. a different that's discussion. A whole other conversation. Yeah, but I mean that's. But this is part of how the the, the the people there actually make a living, where they're able to sell some of that. So, you know, it's been great for us to be able to run it, and and it's been well received in the marketplace. I mean, we launched it. Uh, Ricky launched it at last year's IPCPR, yeah, oh, a big yeah. trade show. And we were sold out by the end of the show, which is kind of neat. The thing about why there's an extra few, it's always interesting to be able to talk to the factories, which I always love that they do. They always keep a little bit back because they always like to maintain the consistency. Say, yeah. And, you know, when you get another batch, which we'll get in a couple, in, in hopefully next year for a 17 launch, um, they always keep some of it. So they actually let us know after the show. By the way, we have a few of these left. What do you guys want to do with it? So... We waited a year, and I think that's why you're able to get some now. Could you make it in a smaller size to, like, extend the, the, the amount of tobacco you have? We could, but you know what? This is really a great size, I yeah, think, yeah. to be able to get Toro. the whole experience. My, yeah. my favorite size. Yeah. I love Toro. I think, I think, we, the, the, I think at this point, we should probably go around the table and get everybody's impression, first impression. We'll start with start the lovely Miss T. I was going to say start with Scott. Don't start with me. Start with Scott. First okay. Oh, uh, this is like my I think fifth or just sixth impression because I've I've had the cigar a number of times and um, the best the I'm not going to get into the flavors right now, but I think the best way that I've been able to describe this is it has a very clean flavor and taste. It's just it's pure, and every single cigar that I've had has been exactly the same. I get that. There's a there's a there's a specific taste in there that I get, and I've got it on every one. And this is one of those rare occasions where I can actually completely identify what the taste is. Paul? But you're not going to tell us what it is. No, not until we review the cigar. Are you okay. crazy? Paul? 
I've been a, a, a big fan of this cigar since the day it came out. Um, I love the flavors. I, I find that the oils and and the sort of sugars of the tobacco all seem to be right there available for your palate and really nicely balanced. Um, and I'm going to wait to tell you about the particular flavors that I like too because I copycat. copycat. Rob? I like it so far. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a world windinger coming. That's it? That's all you have? That's all I have. Man of I'm many enjoying words. it. Do I? Yeah, I'm, uh, my initial impression is it's a lot of pepper. It's a lot of, it's a powerhouse. This is a definitely powerhouse mm -hmm. cigar. Wow. <laughs> okay. okay. Here's the thing I love about this cigar. The first time I lit up this cigar, I was actually at my office in Richmond, and it was neat. It was, I, it was like, you know, shaking the food for your dog or cat, where they, everybody came running to my office, and Ricky was in there, and the aroma actually perme permeated throughout the office, and people came in, what are you smoking? And I'm like, just smoking a cigar. And all the ladies that are in our office, like, wow, that smells really good. And they had never smelled anything like that before. And that's what the unique thing is. I've been in smoke shops where I, uh, guys have been smoking. I'm like, dude, you're smoking an Amazon base. And I, and you can just tell no, immediately. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's just, you know, part of that. And it kind of gets your palate a little bit wet before mm -hmm. you actually go smoke the cigar, which is really, really unique. Hmm. One was thing that I noticed different about this one than the one I had when it first came out, it feels a tad bit... It, it tastes a tad bit um, mellow, a little bit more like it mellow, just a little bit more. Because I remember it was definitely more, you know, heavy hitting than it is now. But it still has got that. Uh, but everyone knows me. I don't like too much stuff. That was John sneezing. Thank Bless you. you, John. <laughs> and Rob Tell? No. 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 <laughs> well, I find it very creamy. I find it very smooth. I think I get where she's getting the peppery taste from, but certainly the creaminess and the smoothness, to me, overcomes the pepper by it's far. It's all on the wrapper, though. I haven't smoked one of these since the inaugural launch last year, and I don't, I don't recall who said it, but I find this a much more tasty cigar. And last year was great. Yes. And I find this much more tasty. You smell it out. Yeah. Bit. yeah, and it's definitely yeah. unique. I I can't think of another cigar that had this exact same flavor. No. I mean, it's it's different, different Always good, and and I I can imagine if you put a bunch of cigars down and pick one up and smoke, and you grab this one, you would know that it Absolutely. was this one. Well, I I would expect nothing less from a company that probably sources more tobacco than any other company on the earth, and, and has as you alluded to earlier, as people all over the world buying tobacco that work for the company. So they're, they're not in the second-hand business, no, no pun intended. <laughs> they even found tobacco in Italy. What does that places. mean? Yeah. Well, there's hands of tobacco. Oh. Italian. There's Italian so, tobacco. So there. coming up with tasty cigars is something that this company, for longer than I've been around, has been known for. And uh, I would expect nothing less. It's a great cigar. I mean, well, what else is can you, what else is in it besides the Amazonian tobacco? Man, yeah, we, he sort of danced around that. Around that. Yeah. He, yeah. Away, he doesn't what, want to answer it. And the thing well, is, well, he's he's going to have to know, isn't he? Well, you know what? The proof is <laughs> in the pudding for me. I mean, I, I, I think I've explained this in a previous segment. Everybody asks me, "Hey, what's the blend of a cigar?" And I just tell people, you know, just smoke it, because you know it's just like when you go to a restaurant. I mean, you don't go into a restaurant and talk to the chef and say, "Hey, man." What's your steak dish going to taste like? You need to try it. You know, they're going to recommend something. Time. They're going to give you some highlights to it. But if I told you there was, you know, tobacco from, you know, Swahili in here, you'd be like, yeah, like, you know what that is. You heard it. You heard it. Right. You heard it. And Swahili, Swahili tobacco. tobacco in here. Swahili. I don't Swahili. even know if they grow tobacco. <laughs> That's they probably not, do. It's not a place. But it's, it's a language. The thing. <laughs> because what happens is you need to smoke this. You need to try this cigar so it hits you differently. I mean, all our pals are a little bit different. Yeah, Paul, you know? question. Absolutely. And, you know, there's basically, <laughs> there's basically five things you can taste. I, I mentioned that in, the, in that previous segment. Sweet, sour, salt, bitter, and umami. And mm -hmm. not everybody has those genes to taste those specific things. But if you can taste everything, then that's how it hits you a little bit differently. So you may taste something different, Scott, than I'll taste. But... Overall, you need to try it because you know you may you may like the cigars that I recommend. You may not like it. There's no right or wrong answer here. It's like art as well. Absolutely. You know, some people oh, like this type of art, some yeah. people don't. Yeah. So, 
you know, I don't get caught up in blends because honestly, when we're working on blends in the factories, either we like it or we don't. It's just that simple, zero or one. That's a pretty simple test. It's I very like that. simple. I actually I always, like that very I got much. a compromised question for you. Where's the wrapper from? I'm not telling you. Uh, no compromise. Because you at know all. why? Because I, I think like that answer better. It, it's on. Because, the I, think, <laughs> so because I think it. I think what you know. What I think it does. It's I think it's, it's on it makes box. people. Um, it makes them. Like if I say it's a Brazilian Maduro, oh hey, I want it. You know, and it, it shouldn't be that way. You know, like I tell customers when we're in the humidor, and they're just sitting there staring. I say, what are you staring at? And they're, I'm trying to figure it out. You got to try it. You yeah. got to just. It's like yeah. jumping in the water. You can't just keep your feet there. Because it's gonna, you know, it's gonna take a while to get warmed up. You gotta just jump in and just and try it. Well, okay. One of the one see. of the best things about this in. cigar okay. is that you really can't come to it with expectations because it's not like anything else. That's for sure. And maybe by not sharing anything about the blend, you don't set up people's expectations. Yeah. For There's a mystique else. to it. Yes. There's a mystique. Speaking of mystique, what's what? the price point of the cigar? Eight ninety five. So it's in the sweet, right about the there. higher it's, end of the sweet spot. For, 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 for a very yeah. limited yeah. edition yeah. cigar I with unique hard to get tobacco, yeah. it's it's actually a bargain. The it, bottom line is you can spend a lot more money and not get anywhere near as high a quality and as tasty a smoke as this one is. This is a tasty cigar. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I mean, you're going to have Ricky on at one point in this show. He may want to divulge a little bit more to it. You know, it's not my place to tell you what, what his blend is, per se, but. Um, you know, I look at, you know, I, I've learned this blending with projects I've worked on. You know, I love looking at really nice, you know, darker wrappers where they have a lots of oil and pith that kind of tells you something. Mm -hmm. But sometimes even when you pick up a blend and you're working on something and you're looking at it and you're like, all right, right in your mind, you're like, you've already determined what this is going to taste like. And it's surprising how it's completely different than, than right. what you pre predetermined. And that's just something I would love to impart to you guys. Don't judge a cigar specifically on the color. If you like a specific color, that's going to tell you something because that's in your wheelhouse. But, you know, you should be able to try cigars and enjoy it for you and not for everybody else in your group because that's really, you're not putting any bias against that cigar. Because there's blends out there that we've done that are specific blends and you're like, and I walk from them and I'm like, hey, idiot, you work on these blends and you're already predetermined this? That's not really a good thing to do. So I've mm -hmm. expanded my mind over the last five years when I'm blending to just to try stuff. And I've told this story where I literally have asked my blender to say, here's the filler binder and wrapper I want to use. They'll bring the blend back, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to smoke that because I know it's going to taste like And they look at me, Michael, you asked us to make this blend, and now you're not going to smoke it. And I'm like, you know what, how do you know we didn't do something different in there? And I'm like, yeah. good point. You know what, you guys hold the recipes, give me the cigars. And it's blown me away because they have done something a little bit different yeah. to it, and it shocked me a little bit. And I've learned that over time, that don't judge a cigar because I know what the filler binder wrapper is. Yep. Yeah, that's not what the cigar smoking experience. Well, yeah, cigar there's cigar. there's thou there's hundreds, maybe thousands of you know d cigars that have Dominican filler and binder and right. a Connecticut exactly. wrapper, and they're and all they different. Taste totally different. Yeah, than absolutely. Other. And there's different zones as well. I mean, there's specific yeah. zones of tobaccos that we use for for blends that this side of the this side of the plot is yeah. completely different than this side exactly. next to it. And we that close. Like your yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like okay. your Esteli R. It's from like, three exactly. different like Esteli. Yeah, how much rain yeah. falls in that area? Sun, sh you know, under the mountain, over the mountain. Yeah, but I'm, I mean, I, I can see that in different areas of the country, but in different plot, yeah. like different yeah. sides yeah. of the plot. Absolutely. absolutely. And that's what's wow. so shocking about it. So when we specifically, you know, when I work on projects, I specifically point out I want to use this plot from this area because I like that flavor. Because I think that you guys are going to like that flavor as well. You know, we are. blend for ourselves first because, or you know, are, like, my like, small yeah. team of guys, we all have to raise our hand. And, you know, it's so intimidating when you're sitting working on the blend. Like this. I mean, Amazon Base is a perfect example. Hey, we got this really cool tobacco from the Amazon, and we want to put it in a blend. I mean, right there, if you have a closed mind, you're going to be like, yeah, I'm not interested. Yeah. You know, that's not what we do. But we yeah. have open minds, and Ricky has a very open mind. When yeah. and McKenna, I, I mean, these guys are thinking about, yeah, we want to try this. We want to experiment. If we have something and it's, mm -hmm. it's cool... And we like the taste, fantastic. If it doesn't work, okay, let's try something yeah, else. Come out, yeah. And that's the fun yeah. of blending cigars. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. When you're blending tobaccos and you're tasting this this cigar, this cigar, this cigar, what do you use to cleanse your palate? Um, again, because it's, it, it's going to get burned out right. after a while. So what do you do to... I, I Personally, I like to drink Cuban coffee and I like to eat yeah. bananas. 
because I that's what I found. Bananas, close. I never heard that before. Bananas, mm -hmm. just because you want to put a little bit more sugar yeah, back sugar. into it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know sometimes with the you know the levels of nicotine that you're smoking, if you're, you're smoking, using up your sugar. Listen, I was in the Dominican last week and we literally smoked. I gosh, over three days we must have smoked close to 100 cigars. Wow. Huh? Cool. You know, and, and it takes a very trained palate. I don't recommend that out there. But <laughs> oh yeah, you know, don't, don't do that yeah. at home. Yeah. 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 Sounds good to me. Buy 100, but just don't smoke them. Yeah. Yeah. Don't smoke them. Go down now. But we're working on multiple projects, so the way to get back some sugar is you know eat bananas I'll drink I'll drink coffee black and I'll, I'll drink water some guys like soda some guys like you know whatever and it's just personal it's just really almond personal. sparkling water and dark chocolate all those I'm things almonds. absolutely I use almonds all, all those yeah almonds yeah. okay okay I, I, I cleanse my palate with another cigar another cigar <laughs> yeah, I knew that would happen I just want to remind everybody That's pretzels these work. very limited edition Amazon basins are available at all 10 cigar cigar stores and if you're not near a Cigar Cigar store, which are located all over the area that this TV show is appearing in, except for you watching in other parts of the country or around the world on our various channels, uh, support your local brick-and-mortar stores. Support the stores that are, you know, there for you in the wintertime with lounges where you can go and smoke and are convenient to you. So, again, we'd love you to come to our stores, but if it's not convenient, please patronize your local brick-and-mortar store. Uh, I think it's time that we uh, put some numbers on this cigar. We gotta review it. Review it first. Do you we know probably how to do the show? Yeah. Huh? Do you follow the show? Yeah, all? occasionally. I don't watch it afterwards though. It just doesn't. <laughs> I enjoy it now. It's the same, same thing, thing every show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you wait? Look, the only reason you're on this panel at all, any of you, is because every once in a while I need to be reminded I could get out of sequence. Do you think you're here for your good looks? Well, maybe one. Oh, Rob? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? That says a lot about you. What? About I'm comfortable with my masculinity? No. What masculinity? Oh, whatever. <laughs> okay. So what are we going to do now? We're going to review it. Review yeah. it, yeah. And you better be a little quick about it, too. Start with you. He always does this. Start with me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's enough. Well, Thank you. Well, that was a great review. All right. Well, this cigar, like I said, it mellowed out from the last time I had it. I'm not a big fan of the Amazon Basin. I'm just not. Um, I don't like a cigar that hits me in the beginning and then wants to try and mellow out later. Because I'm like, you know, once I get that hit, I'm like, I don't want to put it down. I really want to keep smoking it. Too late but to make friends. What? What? I, what? I'm being honest. And um, you do get some cream. It is creamy. I do get the flavor notes. When I retrohale, I wish I could just sit and retrohale this cigar because it's actually nice through the retrohale. I get um, a little bit of cocoa. I'm getting some like roasted nuts in there um, and definitely pepper. But I don't get so much pepper through the retrohale, so I don't mind it that much. Rob? Cool. What? Master um, Blend 3, remember? Oh, my okay, God. Okay, go ahead. I'm going to always bring that up. Stop. Okay. Stop. From the mouth of the I don't, I don't. Oh, oh God. Oh, 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 Why did you bring this I didn't. Uh, Children. Uh, this nice. cigar is the best cigar I've had in the last year. I don't care what anybody says to you. I think it's the best cigar I've had in, in the last year. It, it's phenomenal. This really works to my flavor profile. Well, that's uh, it's, it, I get no pepper at all in this cigar. None. I do get the hints of chocolate or cocoa, not chocolate, cocoa. Yeah. Um, it's very sweet when you, like you were saying, when you s just smell the tip before you, yep. before you light it up. It's very sweet. And I, I'm getting that, but it's not a chocolate sweet. It's different. Okay. So, okay. We've got to move it a little bit. I know where you're, I think I know where you're, I don't taste pepper, but I can feel, on the tip of my tongue, yeah, I feel. I but it the, I get a very distinct black tea flavor for this. It's mm -hmm. just, it, it's, every time I smoke it, it's clear as day. It's like that, you know, when you... Uh, Tea without the, the sugar and the, the milk. I'm about to drink some tea. I get it every time. It's just, and it's a really clean flavor. Mm -hmm. Paul? I get what I call dark flavors. That's molasses, uh, dark coffee, <laughs> like dark roast coffee, uh, dark chocolate, all very dark. dark, a little bit sweet, but dark, intense flavors, and I, I think it works perfectly. Yeah, like black tea. That's dark black. Well, I tend I, I tend to agree with uh, everybody on the panel except for one person who remained nameless. Uh, this is a damn fine cigar. I mean, Woo! Damn fine damn cigar. Fine. I mean, 
There's no way to say it better than that. This is my kind of cigar. It's not too strong. has a boatload of taste. I agree with the dark chocolate. I, I call it dark cocoa. Uh, I get a little tiny bit of the pepper on the tip of the tongue, too. I get a little of that. But remember, much like it was said earlier, art or wine, smoking cigars is very subjective. But I believe this cigar will fit everybody. If you like a cigar with a lot of taste, you know, forget everything else for a moment at a, at a very reasonable price. This is a great cigar for you. So I think it's time now to put a number on it. 9.4. Whoa. 9.4, sorry. Remember, it's 1 to 10. I go 9.5 in the best retro hail on any cigar I've ever had, well, period. I said that was a good retro hail. Even your own? Yes. Wow. Because of the retro hails. We've shamed her into it. 7.69. Ah, 7.69. Try to get my 69 in there somehow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Think of better ways, but you know. Wow. Yeah, wow. really. I give this a 9.9. Wow. 5. 9.95. 9. 9. 9. 4. 3. No. This is. Why didn't you give it a 10? Oh, because it doesn't have a camera and wrapper. Oh, God. <laughs> How do you know he wouldn't tell Look you? Uh, <laughs> that was not camera Camera is from Africa. This it's is from Camera Maduro. Camera and Maduro. All right, for a lot of reasons that have it's been already thing. discussed on, on this esteemed avuncular panel. Because I knew you liked that word. Okay. I hope somebody looked it up. Uh, this cigar rings all the bells. This cigar is perfect for me. I give it a 10. Whoa! Wow. Whoa. I'm not yeah. sure you ever gave a cigar. Yes, wow. I did. Did you, did you give you a cigar a 10? Did, yeah. Okay. Once. Okay. As we come to the close of our show on a sad note, it's with much sadness that I report tonight that we've lost our creative soul. Bruce Klein, our director, producer, and the juice behind the creation of this show since its inception has tragically passed away. He was the man that made a lot of this possible. He was behind the scenes, so you never saw him. We got all the credit. He did all the work. It was fun for us to show up, but it was great love and labor for him to edit the show, produce the show, and direct the show. He is forever in our hearts, and we will miss him always. Thank you, Bruce. Bye, Bruce. Bye, Bruce. Bye, Bruce. Bye, Bruce. Bye, Bruce. Sail you. along, my friend. You will be sorely missed. Always smoke sweet, Chris. This is Glenn Loop, Executive Director at Cigar Rights of America, a grassroots movement designed and in existence to defend your ability to enjoy great premium handmade cigars. We truly live in a renaissance of great cigar making. Right now, some of the greatest blends in the history of this wonderful industry are on the market. They're in these amazing humidors all around us. They're in your local cigar shop. Now they're under attack, whether it's smoking bans and taxation at the state level, or a city hall wanting to put new regulations on your ability to enjoy cigars, or what's going on in Washington, D.C. with the proposed federal regulation of this amazing industry. This needs to stop. You need to be a part of this process. Plants literally from ground to ceiling are probably about this big. I mean, they're not, they don't really grow like regular tobacco plants where you get like six, seven yeah. feet tall. <laughs> you got a lot, get a lot of leaves off it. That's why it's rare. It's very, it's very rare. And it's hard to get because it doesn't get that big, so exactly. there's not enough tobacco. Exactly. So exactly. this is yet another reason for us to not let the big lumber companies clear cut the rainforest. Oh, God, no. That's a whole nother. Yeah, yeah. That's a different that's discussion. That's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. But, I mean, that's... But this is part of how the, 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 the people there actually make a living where they're able to sell some of that. So, you know, it's been great for us to be able to run in this, and, and it's been well received in the marketplace. I mean, we launched it, uh, Ricky launched it at last year's IPCPR, yeah, oh, a big yeah. trade show, and we were sold out by the end of the show, which is kind of neat. The thing about why there's an extra few, it's always interesting to be able to talk to the factories which I always love that they do. They always keep a little bit back because they always like to maintain yes, the consistency. Like, yeah. And you know, when you get another batch, which we'll get in a couple, in, in hopefully next year, for a 17 launch, um, they always keep some of it. So they actually let us know after the show. By the way, we have a few of these left. What do you guys want to do with it? So 
we waited a year, and I think that's why you're able to get some now. Could you make it in a smaller size to like extend the, the, the amount of tobacco you have? We could, but you know what? This is really a great size. Yeah, I think yeah. to be able to get Toro the whole experience. My, yeah. my yeah. favorite size. Yeah. I love the Toro. I, I think, think we. The, the, I think at this point we should probably go around the table and get everybody's impression, first impression. We'll start with the lovely Miss T. I was going to say start with Scott. Don't start with me. Start with Scott. Yeah. <laughs> first okay. Impression, well, this is like my. I, th I think you just took the top because I've I've had the cigar a number of times and um, the best the. I'm not going to get into the flavors right now, but I think the best way that I've been able to describe this is it has a very clean flavor and taste. It's and thank you, and welcome back to Cigar Time. Thank you for what? Well, I don't know. I'm giving thanks that we're still all here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. Because unfortunately, one of us isn't here that's anymore. True. But that's more true. about that later. Your friendly Tuesday night show all about premium cigars. Again, we're joined by Michael Giannetti. Giannetti. Really? Oh, my God. I blew that. I know you 20 okay. years, and I blew it. All right. Hey, that's the blooper reel. That's blooper reel. Well, yeah. let it roll. <laughs> I did that deliberately just to get a little... The well-dressed, stylish yeah. Michael J. Today we're going to have the lovely Miss T. Oh, no, no. we're not going to have the lovely get Miss T. Get him off the set. I don't know what's going on with him. No, today. we're going to have Michael set. describe our cigar for today, which is the Amazon Basin by yeah. CAO. Uh. And it comes in various sizes. No. All of them are just this size. <laughs> you can have it in any size you want. As long as it's this size. As long as it's Toro. Did he just drop in from... With planet. Mars yeah. from, uh, <laughs> from uh, Yatanga. Yatanga. <laughs> Michael, uh, since uh, uh, the lovely Miss T, <laughs> what will happen now? She's talking about Nothing. Uranus. She is talking. <laughs> oh, okay, I don't, have I don't have hemorrhoids. Why don't, uh, why, don't, why don't you tell us about this blend? So, <laughs> as you can tell, we're not having a lot of fun here, but no. that's yeah. what cigars are about. Yes. So, right? <laughs> right. So, first of all, thank you. I'm back in my hometown, Philadelphia, and yeah. excited Woo to be with very old friends. Yeah, very old oh, friends. Yeah. But that's what happens when you, when you know each other for a long time. Yeah. So, this is was released last year. This is called Amazon Basin, and it's a very unique story. I had a little bit to do with it, but the man that really had a lot to do with it is Ricky Rodriguez. He's the man behind the CIO blend, and he's not here, so I'm going to speak on his behalf. And also Ed McKenna, the other gentleman that worked on this. What these guys did is we actually commissioned, um, we were, CAO basically looks for tobaccos around the world, and so we were looking for something very, very unique. Yep. Part of the tobacco was in the Amazon base, it's called Bracanza Tobacco, and literally you have to take a boat, which is like not recommended to go to the Amazon, and you go into this field and you'll find this very, very unique tobacco that is actually blended within here. That's about all I'm going to tell you about this blend, but what, you, what I suggest you do before you smoke this cigar is literally put it up to your nose and inhale a little bit, and you will smell this almost sweet, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, date-like flavor. Right, Rob? It is. It's incredible. It really is. I love, I'll, I'll talk about the cigar No, go ahead. Later. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'll talk about my opinion about the cigar later. Okay. And so what you do, what you get with this is because it was so limited, every three years is how long it takes to grow this tobacco. And so hopefully in 2017 there will be more of this available and you'll see more Amazon Basin tobacco cigars made with this specific blend. The really unique thing is instead of putting a cigar band on it, we actually took some of the stems from the tobacco and actually made it as the band which really tied together this whole Amazon Basin That's crazy because most companies put the stem in the cigar. <laughs> Yeah, which is not recommended. Well, hopefully no, not. not. That, yeah. It doesn't really, a lot really does that, smoke. But I know a lot of guys have tried Going to smoke through too. this, and it actually imparts even a, a even more unique thing. I have personally have not, haven't really smoked through the stem part of it, but when you light this up, you know, you're going to get this very, very unique taste profile that's kind of very, very different than anything you've ever tried in cigars. And uh, really proud of the guys, Ricky Rodriguez, Ed McKenna, that worked on this blend, and uh, you guys need to try it. I understand, though, Arthur and and. Uh, Team here at Cigar Cigars, you guys may have a few of these. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Our hands we, on the call. By yeah, all interested. that we can get. We yeah. may have some. So, because this is a very limited model, and every once in a while, every once in a while. And so that's how you get the tobacco out, and then you have to rub it out almost like pipe tobacco to use it for for the blend. It's a, a very unique process. It took us 
it took Ricky and Ed a long time and the team in, in uh, Nicaragua and Honduras where they made these blends to come up with it. The unique thing about this tobacco is you have to use it in a way with the other tobaccos that we're using in this blend to actually have to be able to burn and smoke really, really well. So you get this flavor. And I mean, right off when I lit this, I mean, it's just, wow, it just hits you with it something. It is unique. Yes. Right. It's clearly unique. It's really impressive. Rob, I would love to hear what you were about to say about what, you know, why you love this. No, no. Whose idea was it to grow tobacco in the Amazon basin? Um, it is something that the local indigenous people do. We have tobacco guys that scour the earth for different tobaccos, and part of what I do, and Ricky is on this team as well, we have an innovation team that we're always looking for very, very different things, because that's what we like to do. We like to play with tobacco, and we sent a guy, one of our master uh, tobacco guys, Johnny Diaz, who actually runs our Caribbean operation, and Ernest Gojack, who's our tobacco buyer, and we say, hey man, we're looking for really, really cool tobaccos, and you know, Ernest ran into this and Johnny's, and they're like, hey man, you know, do you guys want to take a trip? And when we found out about what it was involved in taking this trip, it's like, you know, I want to come back alive because, yeah. again, yeah. you literally have to take a canoe ride and you have to go walking through the rainforest. It's a, it's a really intense thing. We actually have photographs and videos of this, and it's, it's pretty impressive just to get this tobacco. And that's part of the reason why we don't have a lot of it. Was, how, it long, how long have they been doing growing tobacco there? Forever. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, it's really Never a local. Heard of it. Yeah, nobody had heard of it. We, they smoked it down there. Yeah. yeah. Is it grown differently? It Is it just like a, a big field like you would normally like think a big of? Or? Field. Yeah, exactly. I, just, I, I guess I was just picturing it's, like stuff in the middle of a rainforest and swamps. Yeah, yeah. literally, that's what you do. You yeah. literally, they, these guys literally machete through the rainforest and they find this clearing and that's where they grow. It. Don't so you they remember actually, your old swamp tobacco? Area, well, it sounds grow. like that. Very, very much. The tobacco probably dial up our old friends and, you know, a truck pulls up in the middle of the night and, yeah. the, and the back door off. opens up and armed guards are there and we, you know, pull for a few boxes here and there. Yeah. Well, I mean, you pay that's for how it. we do it. That's how we something do like that. Yeah, you gotta do something. Who's so, you know, that's all, my, 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 is this all you're gonna leave us with with this my, blend? My understanding is not only is this tobacco very unique, but the method that they use for fermenting the tobacco is also extremely unusual. Is that the one where they put the tobacco in with the piranhas? No. <laughs> Although, no, no, it has no bite at well, all. That's the account of the company. It's <laughs> very good. No bite. I don't know. I know something <laughs> like, no, no laughter from our live studio audience on that joke. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it, as, as I understand it, instead of piling up the tobacco in the pilonas, they take each leaf and they roll the leaf up into like almost like a straw, very thin little piece, uh, strips, and they stack thousands of those into barrels and then they ferment it under steam pressure for six months and the fermentation happens in chemically in a slightly different way because of that they and ferment them for six months yes oh, under is that true or is he making stuff up again no that's <laughs> does his story hold water uh, a little bit but <laughs> A little bit. It's what it says on the box. Not enough for a good day. It, right? it says it on the box. It says it on the box. What box? <laughs> and you believe that? I, it's again. How you, can you believe it? You put it actually, on the internet. Actually, actually you're right. You're, you're partially right. Part of the way they do this, actually, they roll the tobacco in in almost palm bark. And what it comes out, what you do is the way we receive it from Brazil is actually looks like a shillelagh. It looks mm. like a big stick that you actually have to unravel. 